Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast Show with Mike Midgley. Hey, and welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. On today's episode, I'm excited to be covering the area of LinkedIn ads. Today's influencer guest is AJ Wilcox, the founder of B2 Linked, and AJ is based in Lear, Utah. So welcome to the show, AJ. How are you, buddy? Uh, Mike, I'm so glad you're having me here. Excited to share with your audience. I'm doing great today. Fantastic. It's a bit sticky out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty hot. It's definitely the, the midsummer. And I've got to say this straight out of the gate. I would have covered this in the bio, but I just jumped on the podcast with uh, AJ. And for you guys watching on the blog, AJ actually works at a, like a treadmill desk. So he was jogging away before he came in. <laughs> I think I should, could certainly do with some of that for sure. But that's an awesome way of uh, getting the work done and uh, keeping fit at the same time, AJ. So that's spot on, mate. Love it. <laughs> so I think we all know um, LinkedIn is one of the most powerful sort of platforms, uh, business to business, networking and relationship building platform out there. If you're in B2B and you're not on LinkedIn, then hey, where are you guys? You know, it certainly provides us unrestricted and direct access to the contacts that we would like to connect with or whether we want to, you know, build as relationships, as networks, you know, make introductions, start a, a, you know, maybe even a sales relationship, whatever it would be. LinkedIn is the place to be. You know, for many of us, we use LinkedIn advanced tools as well, things like Sales Navigator, Career Premium Career, LinkedIn Learning, we're in and out of groups, um, you know, and actively contributing to build an influence and grow our business networks organically. And as I say, for me, without LinkedIn, I think I'm lost. And while we're active on other platforms, LinkedIn is certainly where it is for our side of business. Um, as I mentioned earlier on today's episode, we're going to be discussing the benefits of using LinkedIn ads. And if you think about it, this, this figure might change depending on what date that you're actually you know, listening to the podcast or watching it. But at the minute, over 630 million professionals and with over four out of five LinkedIn members responsible for decision making at some sort of level, whether that's senior influencer, middle manager, or, you know, obviously direct decision maker. Um, you know, isn't it time you leverage this medium and allocate some of your marketing budget into LinkedIn? Before we get started, you can connect with uh, AJ. Uh, on Twitter, uh, Wilcox AJ, that's W I L C O X A J. LinkedIn, I N forward slash Wilcox AJ. And please head over to visit um, AJ's website at link, uh, sorry, b2linked.com. And also, we um, AJ has a great little checklist for those who are just wanting to get started uh, with LinkedIn ads. If you head over to b2linked.com forward slash checklist, there's a great little um, sort of resource that you can download there. It's going to give you all the pros, the do's and don'ts of LinkedIn ads. So when you listen to this podcast, if you're a little bit impatient and want to get that downloaded, head over, head over to AJ's site. You can get that as well. But please come back and check in with us as well. Um, so before we get started here, let's learn a little bit more about AJ um, and his authority around LinkedIn ads. Uh, it's pretty special with his experience and, his, and the niche that he's playing in. So tell me a little bit more, AJ, on b2linked.com, uh, um, LinkedIn ad specific, really tight niche, uh, way back in what, 2014. How do you get started with that? Why LinkedIn ads? Why 2014? Tell us a little bit more about that, buddy. Well, it was kind of funny because I started my career about 12 years ago as a search engine optimization guy. I loved SEO. I, I loved all the areas of digital marketing, but really didn't appreciate the paid side all too much, although I had played in, in Google Ads uh, with some pretty significant budgets. So you fast forward about seven years into my career, and I had a, a I just got hired onto a technology company um, as their you know first digital marketing hire, and so yeah. I'm talking to the CMO on my first day and laying out my plans for my SEO, my Google Ads, um, and she kind of stops me and says, "Okay, all that sounds great. Go ahead and execute, but just so you know, we started a pilot using LinkedIn Ads. So see what you can do." And I just didn't want to look like an idiot to my new boss, and so I said, "Yes, ma'am, absolutely." And then I went and started digging into the platform trying to figure things out and about I, I, it was rough. I mean, the platform was in really rough space back in 2011, but um, I had a sales guy come up to me about two weeks later and said, Hey, we don't know what you're doing over here, but we love your leads. We're fighting over them. Like whatever you're doing, keep it up. And so I looked in Salesforce at the time to see, you know, what are the leads he's talking about? I, I want to figure out what I'm doing. And every single one of them was sourced from LinkedIn ads, oh, even man. though I was just taking a first stab at it. And so I said, okay, I've got to keep investing here. And I kept growing and growing and growing that budget until we were the largest spending company worldwide on wow. LinkedIn ads platform. Um, 
ran that for about two and a half years. And after that, I, I left and went, okay, this can't be the only company who's successful on LinkedIn ads. Uh, maybe more need it. And so I, I don't like ad agencies, but I started one because uh, it was the best format I could think of to bring my knowledge on LinkedIn ads to as many people as possible. Yeah, that's a great story. And sometimes it's just about, like you say, you weren't necessarily focused on that. It's just something that happened to sort of get put on your plate. And then like all good entrepreneurs, you get hold of it, work it through and then see how that plays. So, you know, I think, you know, we cover a lot of subjects on the Open Mic podcast. And for the listeners out there, um, you know, it, it's all about sort of being adaptable. It's being agile. It's being able to pivot. You know, we do that in sales. We do that with maybe hires and, you know, recruits and, you know, even challenges with finance you know if, if we're up and down on, on on the revenue line but you know always be aware you know look at some of the developing platforms out there not I'm obviously we're talking LinkedIn here and this show's all about it but there is a lot of other developing social platforms out there that you know may be available so just because it's not mainstream there is always an opportunity to get in early and ultimately whilst AJ went to start and run a, a job if that's the best way uh, he ended up turning this into a career so uh, congratulations on that AJ it, 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 you know phenomenal for you know crafting that talent and getting it out there and like you say uh, as a LinkedIn partner you're managing some of, you know among some of the world's most sophisticated advertising accounts worldwide so just tell us a little bit more about that and what do you mean when you say sophisticated advertising accounts worldwide you know obviously people say what does that mean you know share, share a bit of an insight with me there yeah, sure. So I'd love to say we, we manage LinkedIn's largest spending customers worldwide. Uh, but, you know, we've worked with four of the, the top 10. Wow. Um, but it, it's hard to say that because some come and go. Uh, yeah. You know, others will continue to, to spend more. Others will cut back. And so I like to say with sophisticated, you know, anyone who's doing stuff in a really, really intelligent way using LinkedIn ads, uh, we are the right team for them. Yeah, absolutely. So based out of Utah, um, and you've got four kids. And uh, this is the, I'm sorry, this sounds awful, doesn't it? But this is the most interesting part out of this slide. And your company guys are wicked fast go kart. Tell us more. <laughs> well, it's really funny. I, I had uh, dreams as a little kid of going fast. I mean, I've always just been a huge car guy. Yeah. I love Aston Martins, Ferraris, all that. I mean, ever since I was like six years old. And so uh, as, I, as I was aging, you know, I have a car, obviously. Um, but I, I found a racing cart on uh on our version of Craigslist here yeah, yeah. and went, you know, I, I'm a grown man. This is like a stupid purchase decision, but I have to have it. And so anyway, if you're ever in the, in the town of Lehigh, Utah, and you see a chubby ginger flying around the streets uh, in a little, you know, wicked fast go-kart, uh, it's probably me. Just please don't call the cops. <laughs> I'm taking a state patrol and not happy about it being not too legal, but uh, we'll, we'll wipe and move on quickly on that. <laughs> no, it's great. And uh, you are fantastic personality, AJ, and I could sure that comes through with you account management you're very passionate about what you do of course so i really appreciate you sharing a little bit of background about you uh, and obviously how you got into linkedin so let's really get into some of the detail and some of the content uh, around this so when you and actually yeah. can i interrupt you for a yeah, second sure, to, to just sure. add on to another point that we, we talked about i mean you mentioned for entrepreneurs to be looking for a, a network that may not be something super mainstream and yeah. I, I love that idea um, because i kind of stumbled onto linkedin ads and i ended up building an entire career out of it uh, and not that I was even looking for it. Yeah. Um, so what I want to encourage everyone, I think most people who are doing marketing are looking for the, the Pareto principle kind of platform, the 80, 20 yeah. rule. So they say, Oh, you know, Google has 80% of the market share. So let's just go ahead and invest in Google. But what I want to share with you is most people are considering, considering the tier one kinds of networks like Google and Facebook. And I think LinkedIn's kind of getting there to tier one uh, in some circles. So most people are considering these, but there's also tier two networks like Quora, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, yeah. um, all of these other networks that maybe aren't getting considered because people look at it and go, oh, there's not a whole lot of volume there, or I don't hear a whole lot about it. But just realize if you have a small test budget, it doesn't matter how much scale that network has, you'll probably be able to spend your full budget on it. So I would say, feel free to go and explore other platforms that others aren't because no platform will ever be as cheap as it is right now. doesn't sure. matter what platform it is. Competition always rises. So go and explore, see if you can be the pioneer. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great piece of advice, AJ. I really appreciate you, you know, building on that. Just to give you an example, uh, we're, we're doing a lot of stats through our HubSpot portal uh, and we're looking at, you know, obviously the, the metrics in there um, and just on the wider sort of dashboards and, and the, the analytics. Um, and our female audience uh, is starting to rise. Um, and whilst we're not saying ultimately that, that you know all females just hang out on Pinterest, but we've really put some effort into our uh, Pinterest account and our boards. Um, and again, you know, uh, we we serve in a lot of I wouldn't say exclusive content. Yes, yet we are planning to do that. But we are getting a lot more engagement uh, from female entrepreneurs in and around the Pinterest than we are on maybe some of the more traditional ones. So you know, when I first sat down with the team, said, "Hey, we're going to go heavy on Pinterest." And oh, what a waste of time! You know, that's like Google Plus. No, 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 no. I believe it. And we've had a go with it. The engagement's going up. The boards are coming up there. Um, you know, it, it ain't shockwave results, guys. You know, it's a few hundred engagements each month. But if we weren't on that platform, hey, you know, and it gives us the opportunity to share podcasts, you know, which obviously brings them back through into more longer form content on the blogs or the apps or whatever it may be. So, you know, don't rule it out. And I, and I second that advice that you give them there all the time. And I love the statement, traffic is never going to be as cheap as it is today. It's always going to rise. I love that. And uh, thanks for sharing with it. Uh, if you want to uh, connect with uh, AJ on the, the social channels, as I said, you can do that on Twitter at, a at Wilcox AJ. Head up to be to the linked.com or on LinkedIn of course, at Wilcox AJ uh, as the um, uh, URL extension. If you search LinkedIn ads as well, uh, that's, a, that's a hashtag that um, AJ sort of rides uh, as well. So as you'd expect. So that's awesome, mate. And um, tell me, if you were to sort of say, just it's like bouncing off script a bit here, um, but if somebody's sort of stuttering um, and thinking about mm, LinkedIn, one of the things that I get said to, you know, mentioned a lot is, hey, Mike, aren't LinkedIn ads more expensive? You know, and I don't know if that's a myth and, I, you know, and things like that. Before we get into the detail side of the questions, just can you just cover that? Is that something that you get asked a lot or, or, or is that a myth that can be busted down based on targeting a niche and quality of lead? What's your view on that? Yeah, certainly not a myth. I mean, without question, LinkedIn ads are more expensive than the rest of their competition. Um, it, with the exception of sometimes Google ads can be pretty yeah. expensive. But here in the US, we pay somewhere between about six to nine dollars per click. Yeah. And if you're used to Facebook ads, you might be used to paying one to two dollars a click. Yeah. So what you want to keep in mind is Facebook's targeting is really, really broad when it comes to B2B because they have very little job title data, uh, company name data, that kind of thing. And so you have to use broad targeting like interest. So let's say you're selling a product that costs you know, multiple thousands of dollars and so only a decision maker is going to be able to make that decision. On Facebook, you just kind of have to say, okay, we're going to target those who have an interest in marketing and hope that we're getting people in the marketing department who can make the decision. So yeah. you're probably going to waste quite a bit of clicks. Whereas LinkedIn, we're paying, you know, call it uh, three to five times more per click, but you've gotten to be so specific about who it is that you're sending these ads to. So these are only marketers with a seniority above manager uh, at a company with more than 500 employees uh, in your country. I mean, so you can be so specific, every single click and every single lead should be golden. So yeah. keep that in mind, it is expensive. So just make sure you have a high enough lifetime value when you close a customer that you can make it work. But otherwise, this will be the platform that pushes the golden leads that your sales team will love. No, absolutely. And you know, <sighs> It's like the old one maker saying, isn't it, where he says, you know, half of my work marketing is working and half is not. I just don't know which. And that, that goes back 100 years or whatever it does. And, uh, you know, ultimately, what I love about LinkedIn is like in the opening side of Asia, you know, for, from, a, from our business, every single one of my customers, prospective customers are on LinkedIn. They're not on LinkedIn. I probably, I say I don't want to deal with them. That's not me being egotistical or anything like that. But ultimately, you know, they're, they're there. It's just getting a strategy that's going to go and, and, and put the right message in front of them and, and create enough value. So absolutely. So thanks for clearing that up. And I know we're slightly off script on that one, AJ, but, but ultimately um, I got a message earlier saying, Mike, you know, I know you're going to interview an LinkedIn guy. Can you get that covered and get it? Uh, you know, uh, myth buster, and you've, you've certainly done that, so that's awesome. Um, so no myth, it is going to cost you a few dollars more, a few pounds more, but think about it, if you're getting two or three what I call wild, out of scope clicks on Facebook or Google, you're probably pro rata by the time you get your first quality lead through at a similar type of cost anyway, so that's something to bear in mind. 
So moving forward then, AJ, for somebody who's not familiar with LinkedIn ads, um, like I said, they've probably heard of Facebook ads, they've probably heard of Google ads, and, you know, and even Twitter cards and things like that in, you know, in the past. Um, tell me, LinkedIn ads, what are they and why are they so special? Yeah, so they're so special really because of the targeting. And I know we've touched on this a little bit, but uh, LinkedIn is the network that all white collar professionals are on. Yeah. And you know, here in North America, we have something like a 95% penetration with white collar professionals. And, uh, and outside the world, LinkedIn is growing faster. Sorry, outside of North America, LinkedIn is growing faster than uh, than you know, inside. And so you look at that going, wow, this is the network, the one network that I can reach exactly the right people. Um, sounds pretty attractive. And on the organic side, I mean, anyone can jump on LinkedIn, start doing searches, find someone who looks really attractive that they want to, you know, start a conversation with, maybe sell to, and you can send a connection request to that person, start a conversation and all of that for free. Yeah. Um, sales teams do this, you know, in real scale, in real volume. Uh, but, ads, this is the way that you can use those exact same features and great qualities about LinkedIn, but now you can do it at near infinite scale. You can literally say, I want to reach everyone in the world who has, you know, this job characteristic and you can get there. Yeah, the, yeah it really is. And, you know, it, for a lot of companies, they go, ah, there's only a handful of people on the planet who can buy my software. I mean, these are uh, government procurement officers who are responsible for X, you know, um, LinkedIn, it's the only network that you can do this, so it's worth paying attention to. Yeah. Uh, we, we can go deeper into the targeting if you want, but you can target by things like job title, seniority, company size, company name even. You can get down to the exact company um, industry, and you know that's probably only a fifth or an eighth of what's available. So would you say, I mean, I'm a LinkedIn sales enough team member. I hooked up to my HubSpot account. Um, and when I do a search in, in NAV, I get so many filters with or negative or below or above. And, and I would imagine, would it be, um, you know, would it be fair to say that the search and the targeting criteria of LinkedIn ads is equal, better than is in sales NAV? But obviously you've got the, you know, you, you, you're boosting the budget. I get the difference. But what I'm saying, is it a similar type of targeting or is it a slightly different platform? It's quite similar, uh, but each platform has uh, a few differences that are worth noting. Yeah. So like on Sales Navigator, you can target people uh, by keyword. Yep. So you're just saying if someone's profile has this keyword in it, I want them to show up. You can also target by if someone has recently changed positions. Yeah. And those are two things that I really wish we had on the ad side. On the other hand, on the ad side, we can target by several things that Sales Nav doesn't have uh, things like interest, some um, what LinkedIn calls their their audience templates. Yeah. Um, so just a few narrow differences, but the vast majority are shared. Your things like seniority, uh, job function, which is your department, uh, job title, all of those are shared between both uh, tools. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you are using sales now, you know, when you've got that, you know, you're benefiting from that sort of targeting, um, just think about the additional targeting in the ads and how that's going to complement what you're doing. Because it's certainly not there to replace it, AJ, is it? It's a complementary to like any paid channel. Yeah, they work so well in tandem with each other. Uh, I'll give you an idea. If sales teams are going out and reaching out to people individually, uh, they'll probably have some modicum of success, and that's great. If you're advertising, you'll probably generate some leads and have some success. But when you do them together, uh, what ends up happening is your sales team will report that they're having very different conversations rather than when they reach out and having someone kind of fold their arms, sit back and say, okay, uh, sell me, you know, why should I listen to you? And, you know, now after they've seen your ads for a little while, it might even be subliminal, but they're now they're starting the conversation by saying, hey, I've heard of you guys before. You must be legit. You know, tell me about yourselves. Yeah. And just that alone is worth gold to the sales team. Of course, that would never be credited to the marketing team's budget, but it's great. Yeah, and you know, that just having that warmer conversation, even if it's lukewarm, it's not cold. And you know, like you say, it's you may not have been invited in for tea, but ultimately they're gonna at least take your call and, and then it's over to you guys to, you know, sort of shake um, you know, your qualities and, and add value from there. So that's awesome. I really appreciate it, AJ. Thank you. So Talk to me about, is there a typical profile, you know, for the types of businesses 
you know, who should or should not advertise on LinkedIn. Is there like, a, if you're a fault to this side of the line, hey, no. But if you fall to this side of the line, hey, yes. You know, talk to us a bit about the types of businesses that are really, you know, either set up for it or maybe, you know, not as good for them. Yeah, I think because of LinkedIn's higher initial cost, um, the real line that you have to get over is if you're paying six to nine dollars a click to get someone to your landing page, then and you might need to have several shots at them, like with retargeting or other types of advertising. Can you still make enough profit on the back end because of what you're charging? So on average, what we found is if you're going to make $15,000 or more from the lifetime of a deal, so let's say you have a deal size of 15K or yeah. a lifetime value that's over that, then LinkedIn ads make sense about 100% of the time. It's very rare when it doesn't. Um, there are certainly companies who are making it work with lower lifetime values, oftentimes because they've had it been advertising for a little while and their process is, is really buttoned up. Um, so I'm not saying if you're under 15 K don't do it at all, but maybe just realize that there's going to have to be some, some learnings and optimization yeah. if you're much less than that. Yeah. Um, that's great. And, yes, and I think it can be to C, B to B, obviously it's a B to B networking platform. I know it's an obvious question, but you know, if I'm a B to C customer sort of, or, or, or provider sort of here, is there a way to do that sort of to target professionals for consumer purchases or would you just say keep it business to business? Yeah, I think probably 95% of the time it's business to business that works so well because those are the companies who want to target by job title, seniority, yeah. industry, all that. Um, but there is a segment of B2C that tends to work really well. Actually, a few of them. So if you're hiring, uh, it's technically B2C, but it's all based off of the B2B targeting facets. So, you know, let's say you're trying to hire a new marketing manager in your company, you can say, I only want to show ads to people in my city who have the current job title of marketing manager, and then yeah. just ask who wants to get involved. And so even though that's not B2B, even though that's not high lifetime value, um, that's still probably a, a great place or a great use for it. You can get really inexpensive, passive candidates, uh, but also a couple other B2C um, functions here, um, higher ed, like uh, master's programs, MBA programs who are targeting right. by someone's education. That works really well. And, you know, that, again, that's B2C. Uh, also in uh, financial services, um, LinkedIn does pretty well too. So I think Microsoft, so no, not Microsoft, uh, Mercedes Benz did a, a case study with LinkedIn a few years ago showing how using LinkedIn as ads, they could sell cars in, to executives in certain areas. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Basically anything with a high lifetime value that that targeting could be actually valuable to you. Yeah, that, that's really good. And I, I think, I'm not sure if you've seen the same type of ads that I have, or whether we're just getting targeted differently or whatever, no doubt. But um, I see a lot of the B2C, and this is what I said to my colleague who was asking me about this exact same subject is, I see the advert if you've got X, I think it's like if you've got like 250,000 pounds or $400,000 minimum in your pension pot, uh, hey, come to us and we can work a, work a deal and you know max that out for retirement. So um, and that, they're the ones that I've seen, you know, um, sat out there, you know, targeting uh, specific executives for pension ports, whether it's company pensions or whatever it would be to do that. So um, do you see much of that at all? Is there much regulation around that for financial services, do you find, AJ, or is it, is it very much an open shop with LinkedIn? Surely they've got gu advertising guidelines, a little bit like Facebook have, you know, they'll say, hey, this type of, you know, um, you know, industry is not, you know, is banned or not allowed to advertise. Is there any, is, do you see anything like that on LinkedIn as well? Yeah, a little bit, but not nearly as bad as Google or Facebook. Um, financial services are very, very well regulated, at least here within the U.S. And so every time I'm talking to a client, they're saying, okay, there are certain things that we can and cannot say. So we want to design our ads to say that. So generally LinkedIn is not the ones who are actually setting that rule and saying, if we see this, we will disapprove your ads. But um, the financial services agencies will govern themselves because they know they'll get a fine if, you know, if someone sees it. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. It is same here in the UK as well. And, you're, you know, obviously with the FCA, um, you know, and all the advertising standards, things like that. So if you're unsure and you want to learn a little bit more, if you're not quite sure if LinkedIn's for you, reach out to AJ, as I say, go over to B2Linked.com. Don't forget to download that checklist, just forward slash checklist, or, you know, 
um, you know, look up AJ online. I'm obviously on LinkedIn is there as well. Connect with him. I'm sure he'll be more happy to give you some, some advice to get you started. Um, and actually, I have something interesting to add on to this. I, I know no one here who's listening is looking to be dishonest in any way, but I'll kind of throw this out there as an option. LinkedIn's exclusion targeting is really good. So for instance, if you know the, the government agency who might be uh, looking over your ads for, <laughs> for what might be a, you know, an issue, you could purposely exclude anyone from that company or you could exclude people from your own industry who might, you know, a competitor who might spot and try to, to say something. So even if you're doing everything on the up and up, it might make sense to exclude those people just for safety, just to make sure. Yeah, that's a great sort of uh, safety net there. And yeah, especially around the competition, you know, uh, f- from that side, that's awesome. And I know, uh, AJ, we talked to about the targeting earlier, you know, what, you know, with the data holes, LinkedIn strength is in the targeting. Um, let, let's just try and go a little bit deeper on that. And, you know, I don't know, let, let, let's throw this out of lib. I'll let you steer it, but, you know, we'll go off script here. We're, we're a company in X niche, you pick that. Um, we want to reach a specific end user. Um, I know we've touched on it at superficial and maybe just come down a little level of the targeting. Um, but, you know, how would you use that in its, in its ultimate, you know, you know, how would you leverage that, um, you know, to reach that ideal prospect? So maybe you could just sort of give us that bit of deeper dive, give us an example, common sort of industry that, you know, really gets sort of focused results by using and leveraging that targeting. Sure thing. So immediately when someone is asking me about targeting, I'm trying to break the persona into two different users or sorry, two different pieces. I want to understand who the professional is, his or herself. And then I want to understand what type of organization that person is at. And the reason why is if you told me that you sell to CFOs, but your product costs $1,200 a month, I'll tell you, you're probably not selling to CFOs of two person companies. You've got to be, you know, at least of a certain size to be able to, to afford that. So I want to understand the professional, the job title of CFO, and then I want to understand company size, industry, you know, does this person make sense to sell into. So it's like so a match in it. If you sort of put him up in front of a mirror to start with, does the product market fit type of thing? Is that what you... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so when you're targeting the company, it's really easy. There are only three filters you want to be concerned with here. There's company size, there's company industry, and then there's company name. So you could, if you can define your type of company you want to go after in those terms, then that's going to be something that's just on every single campaign. You're going to use the same one. They have to be at companies with more than 500 employees or more than 5,000 employees. Um, in a certain industry, you can set that. And then on the professional side, now you have all of these options. Uh, I like to use four default ones. And so we'll go through that, but then I'll also list off some of the other ones you might consider too. Just so, to back yeah. up a bit, AJ, you mentioned these three things on the company. I'm really sorry, I missed it. I'm not sure if the audio picked it up. The size, the industry, and what was the third one? Oh, and the third one is company name, where oh. you can target a, any, a specific company or a list Bikes, of specific companies. Bikes name, sorry, apologies. I had a bit of a crackling the old ear piece there. So also, and then we're gonna jump onto the personal side or the professional side on these four, yeah? Yeah, yeah, great. All right, so we have job title, which tends to make the most sense to to most users, um, just because you know in business to business we're thinking of job titles. But what that also means is competition is going to rise for those because most people are trying to use it. So be aware, job title is great, but you'll probably pay a little bit more per click for it. Uh, the next is job function, which is someone's department with their level of seniority combined. Yeah. So for instance, if we're talking about, let's say we're looking at IT directors, because uh, that's a, a pretty common type of target. Job title, just simple, IT directors, easy. Um, if you're looking at job function, you do job function of IT and seniority director. And again, that makes a lot of sense. And those are gonna be some of your your cheapest clicks because of how broad the department targeting is. Yeah. Then you've got a couple that are kind of in between on cost, but also can be powerful. You have skills plus seniority. So maybe we target some IT skills that you'd only have if you were in IT. And then Cisco Cisco routers or something on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be great. And then you, of course, you add your director seniority on top of that. Uh, This can be great because if someone has a job title like, um, like, 
we'll say it's, it's IT director is their job title, um, but you only care about them if they have experience with Cisco, yeah. then you can use a skill of Cisco routers uh, with a director level of seniority and you're being a little bit more specific uh, while being more encompassing than you could with job titles. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. And then the final is groups. I know you mentioned here at the beginning of our conversation about, you know, people jumping in and using LinkedIn groups. If you go and join a group about, about IT, uh, if your job title is just, I don't know, something super broad, systems, head of operations, whatever, but if you're a member of an IT group, I know that that's a topic that is really, really important to you. And yeah, because so they've raised their that. hand, haven't they? They've said, hey, you know, just by, I mean, I don't know about you, but, and, and the listeners out there, I'm sure most people may, they may join a group to start with, just to sort of have a look around. Is that what, you know, because, you know, I'm not saying that people are, uh, are misbadging the groups or misnaming them, but I've, I've joined a couple of groups and either it's been the right topic, but some of the conversations either been weak or poor or, there's been one or two people in the group who then nobody else does so I've left but ultimately when I join a group you know usually what I like about it is the ones where you've got to be approved for groups um, where you know you, you, you sort of the, you know maybe they're just avoiding all the business development reps going in there and hassling people which I like those because if you've got to be pre-approved by a group and AJ I'd love to get your take and this is only mine that if I've got to sort of fill in questions, you know, justify my, my experience, my past career or whatever, then to me, that's super, super sort of Jenga, as I call it. You know, it's right in the middle of the bullseye because, you know, if I'm in automotive, we were talking about Mark earlier on, um, uh, you know, who introduced us and put us together. Um, both me and Mark's been in automotive, God knows how many, you know, hundreds of years between us. Um, then, you know, we, we can justify it with our career, you know, with this, 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 this. We get approved, we then respectfully of those other automotive and finance professionals out there and then that's that so i love the groups i've never even thought about it that way ag but since you said that you know the group thing to me is like wow my eyes are lit up i get it i understand it the penny drop the aha moment comes in so thanks for sharing that and uh, i take it you know is there is there another way of seeing that or is that is that pretty much the way you see it as well or is there another way to consider groups when targeting yeah, I think you're spot on here. Uh, the big challenge with groups on LinkedIn is it's, it's not a great product. Yeah. I think LinkedIn really wanted them to be like Facebook groups, but just like your experience and mine, there have been a whole bunch of people who went and joined groups and went, oh, there's no actual conversation here. Um, I guess there's no reason for me to come back. Uh, people who just come in, drop a link and leave, or people who are spamming. Yeah. Um, so I, this for better or for worse, it actually works a little bit to our advantage in, uh, in LinkedIn's targeting. Not that it's an advantage that a group isn't active, but if I went and joined a group and I went, oh, there's no actual conversation here. I guess I'm not coming back. I'm still a member of that group. Yeah. And so at some point I still raised my hand saying this is an important topic to me, but I'm not reliant on you actually going and spending time in those groups. So when I'm targeting people through the ads okay. platform, I can still target them by an interest, even though it's not something that is, uh, you know, they're super active around. Yeah, that's brilliant. Because ultimately, why join an automotive group if you're not in automotive or you've no automotive associations? It makes a ton of sense. That's fantastic. So just to recap on those seven points, then we've got the name, um, the size, sorry, the name, industry, and size on the company um, sort of side. We've got the title, the function, the skills, and the groups on the professional side. Yeah, that's right. And those are the four that I really like to use. But then there's also a whole bunch of other facets you can use as well. Like we have interests, we have age, what school you went to, what you studied, we have years of experience, we have, I mean, all these things that, you know, you can just get in and kind of go nuts with. Um, but I like to break things down into the, the four templates that I showed you. Yeah. Uh, just because over time I can see, you know, all four of those targeting methods are all targeting seemingly the same person, but they're going to have a little bit different of a personality. One's going to have a lower cost. One's going to have higher lead quality. And if you're running all four of those uh, at the same time, comparing them against each other, you can start to see over time which ones you should send your limited budget towards uh, or how you can scale really easily. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's absolutely gold. Thank you very much, AJ, for covering that. And, so when we look at sort of and take this sort of discussion further, what are the essentials you need in place to run a successful LinkedIn ads campaign? If you were to sort of say, without these guys, you know, take a step back and get in more, you know, what do I need in play first before I go, go forward with LinkedIn ads? Yeah, I think my favorite 
acronym to use to keep this in mind. Uh, and this is the same thing goes for any social advertising platform. You need three things to get started. And I call this AMO, A-M-O. And it stands for your audience, your message, and your offer. Yeah. And your audience is the targeting, just an understanding of who it is that you want to target. Um, your message is what the user sees. So the image you're using, what type of ad format it is, the ad copy you use. But by far the most important thing for advertising is your, the O, your offer. And this is, if you just put an ad out there that said, click here to talk to my high pressure sales rep, no <laughs> one has any you know, sort of incentive to click on that ad, right? And so what we need is what can we offer them that actually gets them to take action. Yeah. And a lot of times that's something like, you know, here's a free in-person event or a free uh, checklist or a cheat sheet, a webinar, a guide, an ebook, something like that where you're at least getting an email address out of them and then you can follow up after that. And if you have an, a good offer in place, despite whichever network you're talking about and you have decent targeting, it's probably going to be a success. Yeah, that's, that's great. And you know, just for people, you know, I get a, I get a lot of questions, AJ, people say to me, Mike, offer, does that mean, is that like a financial discount and things like that? And I said, well, it can be, but just to define, offer can be many other things. It could be a content offer, like you say, access to a mini webinar series, video series, a white paper, uh, like you say, a ticket to a, an event or whatever it might be. It doesn't just have to be a discount. You know, yeah, it, that, that works as well. You know, we all see the Cyber Mondays, Black Fridays and other seasonal sales, but it, you know, it doesn't have to be, hey, I've got to give a discount off my product to use this ad platform that's not correct is it aj offers is some type of value in advance and in exchange for the, the contact details that's exactly it and i use offer because you have to be pretty generic because there are advertisers who are having success saying click here to talk to our sales rep yeah. and there have there are some people being successful saying click here to buy and so it's yeah. got to be pretty pretty broad but in general i tell people you probably want to start out with something that we might call it a lead magnet or some kind of free gated content um but but yeah, I mean, think of it as broad as you want. Uh, ultimately, you can test anything you want because um, you are only going to pay when someone clicks anyway. So if you put an offer out there that's too, it's too bottom of the funnel, as we'd call it, you're, you're asking too much too soon. The worst thing that can happen is no one clicks and your ad shuts off. And it just didn't cost you anything. Yeah, that's, that's great. I really appreciate it. So we've now got the essentials. We understand the targeting. We know who can advertise in there. Um, you know, we, we touched on the, the, the expensive stuff earlier about, you know, regular here about the cost of it and things like that. And, and you know, that, I know this, we're going to revisit that now. Um, but, you know, I understand if you're a drunk driver, uh, drunk driver turns in LA, your Facebook ads or your Google ad clicks might be 90 or hundred dollars a click or something ridiculous like that. And if you're doing nuclear science in the middle of Idaho or something, it might be the zero center click or something. So the, the industries, the markets, the targets, the popularity of all these products and services, you know, will range. But is there, um, is there a cost entry, you know, um, for coming into LinkedIn ads and, you know, you're here on Facebook, a good friend of mine, Dennis Yu, uh, is a Facebook ads guru at Blitzmetric, awesome guy. Dennis has like a little course, one dollar a day Facebook ads, and then you, you, you go up and scale up from there. Is there a, a minimum uh, budget that people should be approaching LinkedIn ads with? You know, because we addressed earlier, it is slightly more expensive per click, although we're better targeted and less wastage, you know, you, you've got to take a view. So I'd just love to get your, your view and build on that original question about the cost and, you know, the value for money, AJ. Um, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I've got a dollar a day, or ten, you know, what's your view on that? Is there a minimum cost of entry to, you know, to get going? Yeah, there, there is. And shout out to Dennis Yu. He's a good friend as well. Um, and, and I love his strategies. Uh, on LinkedIn, because the costs are so much higher on LinkedIn than they are on Facebook, it means our minimums have to go up too. Of course. We need, we need the same amount of traffic to, to figure things out. Uh, so what I tell people is somewhere between about three and $5,000 a month is probably, yeah. or at least for your first month, is probably great to start with. Uh, if you're not paying an agency like ours to do the ads for you and you're not in a hurry, you can spend that same three to $5,000 dollars over a much longer period of time you know yeah. over six months if you needed to so your your minimum is really ten dollars a day as the minimum linkedin will will let you do yeah. but i would say for whatever pilot uh make sure you've got a good chunk of budget there so even though even if you decide this isn't something for us we don't want to continue that three to five k is enough spend that you know kind of what to expect you know how your audience 
responded to what your offer was and your messages. And uh, th that's probably a good place. Uh, we found that if we, if we have clients who are spending less than 3K a month uh, US, then they tend to churn faster and it's probably just because they haven't seen the full business impact. Yeah, we've got a little bit more time, so I'm gonna sneak another question in, AJ. Uh, something that we've not done is sponsored in-mail. You, could you, uh, because obviously in mails like a sales now, you get 30 or 70 or whatever you, you credit, so you can get the re-credits back if they connect with you and things like that. So should a company who's looking at LinkedIn ads also think about sponsored in mail, two different animals, same animal, what's your view on that? Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad you asked because sponsored in mail is by far the most nuanced of all of LinkedIn's ad formats. Uh, I would recommend for anyone who's trying LinkedIn ads for the first time, start with sponsored content. Uh, it's the one that appears right in your newsfeed. Yep. Uh, it's, it's one of the lowest risk. Um, it, it, you're going to get a lot of reach. It's a big ad format. So you pretty much get to use whatever creative you want. So that's probably where you want to start. I only recommend sponsored in mail about 5% of the time. Right. And here's why LinkedIn will tell you it's pretty inexpensive because you go, Ooh, I'm paying six to $9 a click over for sponsored content. Sponsored in mail is telling me I only have to pay 35 to 85 cents per cent. Well, what that's not taking into account is you send it to someone, no guarantee that they're going to see it or open it or click on it. So that's three steps in between you and a click. And so when you do that math, you have a 50% open rate on average and then a 3% click through rate on average. And so like we said, on average, your cost per click is actually going to be somewhere between about 23 to $56, wow. which is, yeah, which is insane. Um, the reason why I do recommend this to the 5% though, is if you have a special offer, something, it feels like a personal invitation. Like if you got it in an email from yeah. someone unsolicited, you'd be excited about it. Then that's when you know it's it's a good offer and it's worth running a sponsored in mail. And you Otherwise, can target it down to a specific, really super tight niche or, or job role with that target and then drop some of those in as well. Yeah, exactly. So if your offer is something like, you know, we want to invite you as a VIP to to this event where you get you know, drinks and network with your, your peers, uh, that's a great offer. Um, potential job offers are a great use here. Something like because of who you are in the industry, we want to give you early access or a yeah. sneak peek into something, want your opinion. Those are the types of offers that tend to work really well here. If you don't have something that feels truly special, just realize you're probably going to pay $40 yeah. per click <laughs> and it's probably best to stick with sponsored content. That's awesome. I appreciate you sneaking that one in at the back end. AJ, the value you've provided, it's real, it's relevant, it's step by step. Thank you so, so much for uh, sharing your wisdom. And as we cover, if somebody sat here and listens to the the podcast thing, hey, I'm going to have a go myself or whatever first. Of course, you can reach out to AJ at b2linked.com. Obviously, pick him up on uh, LinkedIn or, or Twitter using the Wilcox AJ uh, uh, extensions. But if you were to give some of the three pro tips, um, AJ, to get started, what would they be? Well, first off, I know any new platform is going to have a significant learning curve. Yeah. So I, I want to make this as simple for you as possible if you want to try to go it alone. So you mentioned right at the beginning that checklist that we offer. Yeah. This is, uh, it's, it's the eight things that you need in order to get started. And it's the same checklist our team follows when we onboard someone. So yeah. you, you know it's good. Uh, just go to b2links.com slash checklist, uh, download it there. Um, if you don't tick that box that says, I want AJ to contact me, you'll never hear from us ever again. <laughs> this is just pure value. Uh, so start there. Those are pretty much everything you need to get started. It'll tell you that you need uh, access to a company page and you need to yeah. start an ads account, how to get there. Um, the next is if you want to take a stab at it, if you have LinkedIn pro and you can actually take a, a free, a free like 30 day trial of LinkedIn pro, you'll get the Linda courses, L Y N D a uh, for free. And so if you have that, then you can actually take my course on, on LinkedIn learning or lynda.com for free. And the first, you know, that course it covers pretty much the first hour of what I charge $400 an hour for as I'm, really? as I'm training. So that's walking you around the platform, making, making sure you know where everything is. Um, and then I think my last tip is uh, as soon as you get to the bidding and budgeting section of when you're starting an ad, um, just realize that LinkedIn, I, although they probably mean well, they do not have your best interest at heart. <laughs> They're going to recommend uh, having a, an automated bid, which is like, here, LinkedIn, here's my wallet. 
do whatever you want with it. Uh, don't do that. Automatically set your bidding to a maximum cost per click where you can set a boundary and you can say, yeah. I'm not willing to pay over $7 a click or five fifty. dollars um, yeah. And that's a, a great place to start. If you're ever not getting the traction you need, you can always increase your budget. But by turning on automatic bidding, uh, it, it just sounds wide open. Exactly. Yeah. You might catch yourself in a bad position. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a notification saying your bill has just reached. Yeah. Yes. It's a bit of a surprise. No, that's great. So the learning curve, get the checklist. That's b2linked.com forward slash checklist. Um, LinkedIn Learning, Linda, go and check out AJ's course on there. Could they buy that course if they, if they want to go and, uh, or is that just, is that, you said they get the first hour, is that like a more advanced course that they can buy in there as well? Or is, is that just the one that there is? Oh, that's the one that there is. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have LinkedIn Pro, I think it costs something like $40 to take the course if you don't. Yeah. So it's, again, very inexpensive compared to hiring me to train. Great value. No, great yeah. value. And then obviously, don't set your automatic bidding budget. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's absolutely awesome. I really, really, really appreciate you taking the time out today. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your guidance. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for helping the audience uh, on LinkedIn us today. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's an absolute pleasure. So if you're ready to get going with LinkedIn ads, head over to b2link.com. Don't forget that you can check the checklist out uh, with forward slash checklist. Look out for AJ on social media, Wilcox AJ on, on Twitter or LinkedIn. And we appreciate you tuning in and continuing your growth engine development today. As always, to get in the game, go to the hustle. Go make it happen. And we're going to catch up with you on another Open Mic podcast real soon. have been listening to The Open Mic, brought to you by The Success Hub. To find out more and to get the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit blog.thesuccesshub.io and view the podcast section. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you in our next episode. This podcast and associated materials is published under copyright to The Success Hub. All rights reserved. No reproduction of this material is permitted.